So let's start talking about, so what does it take to do this thing? I mean, we've talked a lot about what it is and what are some of the challenges and we've talked a lot about, um, you know, some things for people to connect with around what white space is and some of the challenges of that. Um, talk us a bit through this process of navigating it. So as we, I think as we said earlier, the, na- the navigation process needs, we need to have a clear understanding of what, what the path looks like, what the pathway is. So there's a bit of work at the early stages in terms of working out, well, how do we communicate that to organisations? What's the communication process look like? So we can ensure that everybody embarks on the journey together, collectively, yeah. and they've all got a view of the direction that, that they're going in. Maybe not necessarily always clear about the exact pathway, because as we mentioned earlier, it may need to change. It may need to change depending on what what sort of hazards are, are, mm-hmm. are experienced along the way. Yeah, we need to work out what it is we're actually going to do. So that's the content development uh, process. What does that? What does the the new skill or the new behaviour or the new the, the new way of working look like? How do we and how do we sort of pack that and unpack it? Yeah. And then thirdly, you know, how will you actually start? So what's the schedule? What's the process? What's the process? Do we have milestones? What's what, Where do we expect to be by a certain time frames? Can we put something in place to show that we're actually on track in terms of where we expect to be? Yeah. So that sort of sets up the the, the, the journey. Yeah, so um, travellers can move. Travellers can move. As we get into the actual movement process, the early stages are in, in our sort of five C's process, which is what, what we're showing here, is about making sure that the leaders understand the context of what they're, they're about to embark on. Mm-hmm. So it's getting them ready for the change, for, for the journey, by giving them a, a, a time to, um, some time to understand what that journey means, yeah. what it means to them, what it means to the organisation. What are some of the new things we need to be doing? Yeah. Maybe what some of the old things we need to be letting go and doing it in a different way? And having a bit of time to reflect on what that might feel like, look like, so, yeah. no, have, no, so, so that they get comfortable with that because the next one then leads you into the comfort stage. Yeah. And if leaders are not comfortable with the fact that they're having to go through a, a, a change process, they won't actually embrace it and they won't actually embark on that change and it won't be successful. Yeah. So there's some time uh, required in the first two stages to get the leaders within the organisation, at, you know, at all levels. Mm-hmm understanding what it's about and getting comfortable with the fact that there is a that there is a change process that they're having to go through. It's about actually putting in an approach that helps people step into the white space yep. where it's uncertain, mm. it's uncomfortable, loss of control, yep. but it's safe to go there because someone's there to support you through it. Mm. It's, it's having the guide that takes you into the white space rather than having somebody just push you in. Yeah. and allow you to float around freely without really any understanding about what it is that you're doing or yeah. why, you, why you're even there. Because as people become more comfortable with that and they're going to start shifting into the learning stage, that's all about their level of confidence. Yeah. And the confidence bit is often where um, people think the change process starts. I've got, some, I've got to acquire some new skills on new new behaviour, so I can get my sleeves rolled up and start straight away. Again, as we mentioned earlier, there is a likelihood that individuals will fail yeah. and, f- and fail fairly early in that process. What does that do to their confidence? What does that do to that confidence? Their confidence dies straight away. But if you if we've spent the time with them providing context and comfort, and that they realise that there is a likelihood of them failing early, yep. they're more comfortable with that process of failure in the confidence building process, and therefore actually doesn't have the same level of negative impact on their confidence. It's yep. part of the learning journey. Yep. So when they do fail, the confidence doesn't drop. That's a part of the process. Yep. The confidence actually may increase because I've just learned something from yep. that. They're now better than they were before they had that failure because they now understand what doesn't work, but also what with a small change can work. Because once we've gone through that increasing comfort and confidence, then we can really accelerate their competency. Yes, and that's where, no, again, that's where you get into this exponential activity where they, they build on their, their ability to be able to operate in this new world with their new skills and new competencies much faster because we've put the time investment in with the previous stages to build the right platform and the right foundation. Yeah, and yeah, you know, when people be, are comfortable and confident in that new level of competency, that gives us consistency and change. Yeah. That means we're likely to stay outside in that growth path. It, it, it's, it's the stickability of the process. It means that you're actually less likely to be drawn backwards mm-hmm. into old habits. Yeah. The consistency bit allows them to form new habits yeah. and the habits are more aligned to the high level of cultural maturity. Yeah. So you can see, just to navigate white space, you've actually got to put a lot of thought yeah. into how do we actually help individuals 
go through the process of change. Mm. If we just set an expectation and let everyone go, some may do it, most won't. Most won't. That's, that's the route to chaos. Yeah. And, and we've heard that so many times when it comes to, oh, we've just run everybody through a leadership workshop and we magically think they're going to be great new leaders. The sheep dip approach does not work. No. Um, all that happens is people get wet um, yeah. and eventually they'll dry out yeah. and they're exactly the same as they were before they got wet. Yeah. Um, and just constantly sheep dipping people, it's just a lot of, a lot of waste of, of dampness. It's a lot of time, it's a lot of money, and yeah. it's a lot of effort. Mm very little change yeah. um, it's while you've got to do an element of that up front but it's realizing what that actually is mm. it's actually context yeah it's all it is mm. it's giving people some context to what you're expecting some context around what you want leadership to be and how you want them to lead it's what you do after that that matters yeah. and I, it, I think it, it's recognizing that you know, this journey is a it has got a time factor to it it's not something that you can do in the space of a few weeks or even a few months. There's, a, there's an element of time investment here to get people through these five stages yeah. so that they can actually be operate at a new level of, of cultural maturity. Because it goes back to the first point we were talking about. You've got to actually push through the whole thing. You can't just keep circling Don't. around change. Mm -hmm. You've actually got to just have the process to push you right through. Because fundamentally, when they get into that confidence, confidence, consistency stage, that's where they're going to start experiencing some black holes. Yeah. I, I know that the hardest part of this is often the start it, and that, that, that take off or the drive that you get from having a different craft mm -hmm. is, is the boost that you need to get through the, the, the resistors at the early stages which we covered a little bit earlier and get into the stages of context, comfort and confidence. And, yeah and that's, that's what I think hopefully people are getting from this session is understanding that that is the reality of change there's this white space that people are going to be uncomfortable with you've got to be able to define where you want them to be so they actually understand that while i step out into this unknown area this uncertain area it's leading to a path like it's leading to another space um, but give them the right structure to get through it yeah. but, but people need to know that there's a purpose and that the, what's that purpose look like mm -hmm. and where are we trying to get to all right, so let's start getting into the summary. So this hopefully helps everyone piece a lot of that discussion together. So the first thing you're probably hearing from us is white space is about the unknown. You know, it's about the uncomfortable area of change. Yeah, and, and I think the, the bit that's interesting for me with that is it is about the unknown it's, and it's certainly about the uncomfortable. Mm. But when you actually get into the white space, some of the things that you will experience in that are actually not quite as unknown as you think they are. Yeah. It's just that as you enter, you can't see them yeah. because you're not quite sure when and where they're going to appear. In that situation, in that change, situation. you're not quite sure exactly what you're going to encounter. That's right. So the second one then is recognizing white space. So just recognizing some of those things. So the uncomfortability, the uncertainty, the loss of control, the different sort of attributes you're going to be working through. Mm -hmm. So you know when you're encountering it. Yeah. Right. You, it, it's, it's a given as you go through this journey that you will be in situations where you, you're going to have to transition through these white space issues. Yeah. Um, and just actually knowing that that's part of the journey can in itself give you a greater chance of being successful. White space can be encountered by both the individual and the organisation or the collective. Yep. It's I think every every significant culture change process that organisations go through, individuals and the organisation will experience their own types of white space and their own elements of white space. Yep. Thinking that, that the organisation is not going to have uh, have to tackle white space is probably not, uh, it's not going to be successful either. Yep. And these last two for me, I think are probably the biggest points here I think we need to understand is to actually get through white space, there's got to be a supportive process to that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, if we mentioned, as we mentioned earlier, you know, part of this is recognising that there is a high potential for individuals to fail. You can't be comfortable to fail in an environment which isn't supportive. For failure. And if you don't generate the supportive environment, individuals will fail once. They'll see that that actually isn't helpful and that they're not getting the support that they want and they'll stop and therefore you won't make the journey. Yeah. And just on the failure bit, how does that work when it comes to, I mean, when we're talking about executing work safely mm. and not having fatalities or serious injuries, so, you know, how, 
just quickly, how does an organisation or individuals negotiate the fact that we still need to allow some level of failure in there without necessarily overreacting to situations? Uh, it, there's, there's clearly a, there's still the risk process that sits alongside that. Yeah. So we're not. You know, the, the, this isn't about throwing risk management out the window and saying it's not something that has to take place anymore. It's about recognizing that in in the cultural change process, particularly from it, this is it, particularly from a behaviour and, and a sort of uh, uh, thoughts, actions, and behaviours point of view, there are some things that need to change. And in that change process, there's a likely or the potential that the outcome of that change will not be what is expected. Yeah. So it's about trying to foresee what those unexpected outcomes could be yeah. and putting in elements of mitigation to allow those to be managed should they happen. So when we're talking about failure, we're talking about an individual trying a new yeah, it's skill, skill, a new style yeah. or a new approach that fits in a more cultural change journey. Mm -hmm. Even within the safety execution space, there's still an element of being able to change, mm. which may lead to failure. But it's knowing that if you've got multiple layers of control, you might want to try playing with one of those controls to see if you can make them more effective. Because the failure of that one control should not lead to a significant outcome. No, if your system's set up properly, yeah. you know, there are barriers in place to stop that single yeah. failure from leading to a significant failure. But I'm just hoping that answers a couple of questions. People go, oh, hang on a minute, we can't have failure in safety because people die. Yeah, you're exactly right. Yeah. But there's elements in there where you can still safely navigate change mm -hmm. and new ways of doing things and get an element of failure in there because we learn from failure as, as the way we go through. And I think we, you know, the focus here is about you know, leaders and getting leaders to become better leaders. So what, mm -hmm. we're, what we're aiming is to improve the leader capability, the leader skill level, the, lead, yeah. the, the ability for the leader to become a better leader. Yeah. So that's more in terms of their behaviours and their, their actions and their thoughts rather than a lot of physicality. We're physicality not, of actually controlling the hazard. We're not talking, yeah. we're not spending a lot of time in changing the way that the, the organisation addresses their physical hazards. This is more about the, the leader's ability to be able to lead in a better yeah. way. And the last one then is to navigate through white space requires actual active coaching. It's not a journey that individuals can be successful in if they actually don't have a support and a guide and a coach to take them through. Yeah. You know, back to the sort of conversation earlier about they may be good at mining, they may be good at construction, they may be good at, at hospitality. hospitality, but they may not necessarily have the capability to be able to guide a lot of leaders through a change process at the same time. So they need to ensure that they, they engage with the right people to do that. Yeah. So to sum it up, every time we go through change or we've grown or we've moved into a new cultural maturity stage, we've navigated white space. Yeah. This, the depth and the, thick, the, the, the sort of spread of that might be different depending on what the change or the growth process mm -hmm. uh, the individual is going through is. Mm -hmm. But every time we go through that, we're going through our own version of what a white space. Yeah.